So, this was the second time up in five years. What fun. I made it all the way over to Silver Fur. Let's have a close look at this board. Thanks again, Svetlana, for loaning me your snowboard, this Roxy Brighton edition. It's fun. Here I am. I'm finding my way over near Silver Fur, down this blue square. I don't really capture all the action like this, but wow. This comprised most of my riding today, and there was lots of action, way better than my first time up. Unfortunately, on this round, uh, I was trying to use the GoPro, and the lens got snow on it. Unsurprising given its height near my boot. Here you can see near the Silver Fur chairlift, the Silver Fur Express, there's a bunch of people eating lunch and hanging out near the fire. Let's have a closer look at that fire. There's the snowboard that's phenomenal. If we zoom in here on the snowboard, we can see that the fire is raging and people are hanging out next to it to get some of that thermal energy. Now, I noticed when I zoomed in there, look at the thermal vortices bending the air. So the emissions from the fire produce that watery effect in the visual field there. Isn't that fantastic? It bends the light. The hot air actually bends the light. Now this next section is a video time lapse from the GoPro of something like 10 or 15 minutes in 17 seconds. And you can see people coming and going bustling about. There's probably several dozen people, maybe a hundred over this way. If we zoom, look at that beautiful sun, sun bathed. Oh, that section is just a piece of cake. Beautiful. Now here we are on the Silver Fur Express, or this is Central Express. This is actually when I first got there, I decided to go up the Black Diamond. No more of that holiday run. Now we're going to look out over the resort here. You can see as the chairlift ascends, all practicing happening over there on the right. There's tons and tons of people that try the holiday lift. This lift, I forget the name, but it takes you up to the top of that ledge. And that's the trick to unlocking Snoqualmie Central. We see a skier there. Here's another skier. Skiers definitely outnumber snowboarders. Here's more skiers. I don't know if you can tell looking at this video, but there's about two inches of fresh snow on top of an icy layer. The glinting, sparkly parts are the ice underneath. It makes a loud noise when you go across it, especially if you're on an edge on a snowboard. Front toe side edge or heel side edge. Here's yet more skiers. In fact, it looks like Skiers probably outnumber snowboarders up here by at least 10 to 1. Now that we're up a little ways, we can look back here and we see that there's a skier behind us on the chairlift behind us. What a beautiful mountainscape, isn't it? You can see these chairlifts are older, they're rust. This one doesn't slow down or stop either. This is one of those ones where if you don't know how to dismount it at the top, you're going to crash and go down the little hill. Once you go to the top of this ledge, you can then proceed eastward towards Central and towards the Silver Fur Express, and that's where the Cool Lodge featured in the earlier part of the video is located. So you pretty much go up to the top of this and take a left from this perspective and go all the way over. And you just connect down once, go up, and then connect down another time and you get to my favorite zone, Outback. Now while Silver Fur itself is my all-time favorite at this specific resort, Outback is a blue square, meaning less moguls, lots of groomed, very wonderful, easy to carve, naturally sloped areas where you can cruise along anywhere between zero and 30 miles per hour with little chance of crashing. In fact, I made it 12 runs today, eight of which were over on Silver Fur. You can see the sun in the sky there. Look at that. 
sorry about my glove. Oh, got the glove out of the photo. I just wanted to give you a look around. This is what it looks like from the chairlift. Pretty much we're at the top of that other chair there that's inoperable. There's um, two chairlifts. You can see the holiday there. There's the top of holiday where all the beginner skiers and practicing parents with their children and such are. But we're going to head up this very, look how steep this is. You can kind of tell when you look out and I pan back and forth. Sorry about the shaky video. I was so excited. This was my first time up to the top in five years. I spent my last time or first time up in five years uh, Tuesday, today's Thursday, uh, exclusively riding holiday because I was afraid of, uh, I was afraid of going up to the top. Fearful that there would only be black diamonds like this, this face here, which is kind of steep and mowgly. Better for skis than snowboard. Notice that you only see skiers on it. The skiers, um, skis go through moguls better than a snowboard. That's just true. Snowboard's better for carving. A big, flat, open plane. Here we see at the top, oh, almost, that guy recovered. I gave him cheers for that. That was a nice recovery. Good recovery, I bobbled buddy. like that recently, too. I did that the other day, too. And that's where we're yeah, headed. Yeah, I caught myself. This too. is the fun part up here. So we see a young skier there just enthusiastically going about. And here's yet more skiers unmounting. Skis are clicked in when they're uh, getting off the chairlift. A snowboard is not. You're pressing your non-mounted foot onto a stomp pad and against the other binding and kind of they have to wing it until you get to a landing spot where you can click into your bindings. I'm just gonna let the camera roll here for a second. Look at that beautiful mountain range. Isn't that stunning? Look at the view from up here. You can see I-90 there in the center. Wow. It's just a real stunner. You're up here in the wilderness. Here's some skiers and I, I felt like I was surrounded by skiers. I did see other people snowboarding. Here's a snowboarder. Here's another snowboarder and another but most of them are skiers and that's okay. Skiing's an older sport than snowboarding. I thought it was fun just to take a break here in the snow. I'm going to zoom in there and take a closer look. You can see all these people coming down this section. Let's have a look here. There's, there's more people. Now, this was earlier in the day. I was taking it easy and uh, took more breaks to stop and record video. Later, I didn't really capture any video, but man, did I have fun. This was... It took me back to... 20 years ago when I was uh, 18 and could go up here and do 20 or 30 runs. Here, I'm going to show you the mechanics of what it's like when you're sitting. There's the board and it makes that scratching noise. That's what you hear, hear when you're on your heel side, like that. And that's your legs. Your legs are going to push like this. Oh, you're locked busy. in. Now you'll see, yeah. you here I've, I've locked time. in and I'm, yeah. I'm about to launch and here I go. And this is the... Uh, this is the blue square course over near Silverford called Outback. And uh, the top is a little bit uh, slow at first and then it speeds up and then you get to a kind of a mowgli part. But down, halfway down and for the rest of the ride, uh, one, it's a nice long course. I mean, you can cruise along at moderate speeds for like a solid 12 to 15 minutes. and. I'm not exaggerating, like it's a nice long run. This is way better than the holiday. Um, maybe a little too hard for a beginner, but once you get the hang of this snowboarding, then you head over to the central and east and, and hang out near the outback and silver fur. And boy, if it's, um, if it's machine groomed nicely, uh, you can really zip along I actually uh, saw a ski patrol dude whipping down here on a snowboard and I learned a few techniques from him by just watching him. 
Sometimes watching an expert or a master do something can update your technique by just um, repeating what you see. And he switched back and forth between the heel and edge very quickly, which is um, a, a technique I immediately adopted where uh, you're not loading your calf muscle and your shin muscle continually for long periods of time, and you spend more time uh, kind of balanced in the center. I don't have any great video of that because uh, after capturing about five minutes of video on the GoPro, um, I, I, I focused more on snowboarding and enjoying myself and less on capturing video. And for that, uh, I apologize. So you can see the, the snow stuck to the front of the GoPro and I'm sure there's a way to prevent this, but um, I left some of these clips in here so you could see just what it's like. What it's like to go down the hill. You can see other people going down the hill. Uh, there's enough open visible spot there that I, I chose to include this section. Uh, you can, it's kind of fun actually. It's a nice amorphic, random, very specific unique viewing angle and uh, even get GoPro drags near the snow there for a second you can really see that we're cruising along like uh, I think I, I spent most of my day going, going between uh, maybe 5 and 20 miles per hour some of these flatter sections at the bottom are kind of slow in fact I never stalled out entirely and had to hike but I did have to change my destination a couple of times to catch a different chairlift, especially uh, over near the entrance, because it's, uh, well, it's just, it's just not as sloped down there. It's a nice gentle slope, so it's hard to, hard to get enough gravitational assist with the hillside to change your destination.